Okay. Today we're going to start with the very basics of how to read a balance sheet. The balance sheet we're going to be using today is for the business home hammers and it's um, as of the 30th of June 2014. The 30th of June, as you'd know, is the end of the financial year um, and the new financial year starts on the 1st of July. So the very basis for understanding a balance sheet is understanding three very important elements. Balance sheets are simply looking at the assets which are in the business and determining how the business has afforded those assets. So um, some of the ways that the asset will be afforded is to the owner's personal equity. The owner will have bought money into the business themselves, their savings uh, through a share float, uh, money which they don't owe to anybody, it is theirs. Then often that's not enough to afford the entire asset. So they also have to incur liabilities. This is debts such as bank loans, mortgages, credit cards, overdrafts, all of these sorts of things uh, need to be used by a business in order to give them enough money to afford the asset which they want to buy. This is what is reflected in the um, this is what is reflected in the balance sheet. We have a whole section here dedicated to assets, different types of assets, current assets and non-current assets, and we'll talk about the difference between those two. But we can add those up and get a total. As we come down further, we have whole sections designated to liabilities, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and eventually we add those up and just get a total. And lastly, we have the category for owner's equity. All the owner's equity totaled up together. So the way we go about reading uh, these balance sheets is this, the format I'm using is called a narrative format, and it's the one that's most often used. It's a narrative format because it tells a story the further you go down the page. As you keep going down, more information becomes available to you, and you discover at the end uh, the conclusion or the situation. Anyway, it's not particularly important. You won't be assessed on that, but it's good to know. There's two different categories of assets, the current asset and the non-current asset. And also, sorry, on this side we have two years side by side. We have 2013 and we have the 2014 year. So we can compare historically what's been happening inside this business. So a current asset is any asset the business intends to keep or intends to have around for less than 12 months. These are things that they want to be able to um, turn into cash within 12 months. They have every intention of returning it back to its liquid form in less than 12 months, as I've said. So cash is already in a liquid state, so of course it would go there. Inventory, that's your stock, of course, that's, uh, that's you want to turn that back into cash as quickly as possible. And accounts receivable, this is money that's owed to you. You want that to come back to you as cash as quickly as possible. I want you to note here the line here. We have those three things, and then we have the line. This tells you that this is a stop. This is an end to this section. This current asset section is now finished because they have a single line. Across here to the right, we then have the total of all of those put together. So all the current assets total together show up here as this, across to the right-hand side. The same thing happens in relation to the non-current assets section. Non-current assets are those things which the business has no intention of selling within the next 12 months. Machinery, vehicles, premises. The big mistake students make here is that they think, well, hang on, I could put a car on eBay tomorrow and I could sell that within 12 months. Why is that not a current asset? I could turn all of these things. You could sell a house in 12 months easily. The point is, is that the business doesn't intend to sell them within the next 12 months. The machinery should stay there for 15 years, ideally, successfully making the business money. The vehicle should be used for 20 years. The premises might be there for 30 years. You can sell them, but you have no intention of selling them in the next 12 months. So again, we have a line here giving you a stop on all of the um, a stop on all of that. This is the section non-current assets is all here, and there's a stop. Again, we have this line here, the total of those three figures. So the total non-current assets is here. Then we come to here, total assets scrolls across, and we have a double line. The double line is very important that you get used to being able to uh, look at and identify and know what it means. It means that there's an adding up of the basic elements. What it's adding up is it's adding up the 16,000 and the 162,000 and it's giving us that total asset. So that is the total current and non-current asset that are being tallied together. So now the basics are explained, we can move quite quickly through the rest of this balance sheet. 
Um, we come on to the current and non-current liabilities. This is the same concept. Current and non-current are the same as it was with assets. Current liabilities are those things that you need to pay off within 12 months. In fact, in the business world, we often work in one month periods, which is just 30 days. So these things need to be paid off within 30 days. So bank overdraft, that needs to be paid down. Um, the bank will expect you to make some installment on that every 30 days. Accounts payable, that's money you owe to other businesses. Here we have the single line, meaning we're finishing looking at this section. Over here, we have a total of those. In the non-current asset section, that's things that the business has longer than 12 months to pay back. A mortgage here is a really good example of that. Mortgages can be up to 25, 30, 35 years in length. Most of your parents would have a mortgage on their house and they would be paying it off over a very long period of time. So here we have the double line again, which shows us that we're adding together the current liability and current um, non-current liabilities, which gives us a total of 90. Finally, as we said on the other screen, the other element we need to look at is owner's equity. So the owner's equity in this case is capital they've bought to the business, profits they've retained from previous years, and um, net profit earned um, in other ways. And here we go, we've come down here. There should actually be a single line here which has been missed to show the stop, but this double line shows it's being totaled up together. Okay, now, as we said on the other screen, assets always need to equal the, if you plus together your owner's equity, and you plus together your liability, it needs to add up to the total assets in the business. If we come back to here, the total assets in this business are $178,000. We saw that before. So that's the total. That means our total liabilities and also our total owner's equity need to add up to that same figure. So let's have a look. Total assets, 178,000. Okay, so we've got 90,000 of total liabilities. Plusing that with our owner's equity is $178,000. So in this sense, our totals balance. This is why it's called a balance sheet. All of the assets, the liabilities, and the equity are all balanced and they add up to what they should.